I can't hear you. I don't know if you could hear me. I wonder what happened. Check it. Check it. I, I can hear you. Okay, I hear Gail. Yes. Okay. Yay. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Radical Revolutionaries. Today, we have a very special guest, Gail McLaughlin. Gail is a former two-term mayor of Richmond, California. Gail has a background as an educator and professional experience in nonprofit leadership organizations promoting literacy, social justice, and environmental health. Gail is running for South Richmond District 5 City Council, a healthy, safe, just, and sustainable Richmond. Some of her Richmond-wide priority areas are stop foreclosures on homeowners, prevent renter evictions, and support small businesses. Ending Chevron's pollution and tax evasion. Build a community hospital for Richmond. Build affordable housing while preserving the neighborhood's character. These are just some of the great policies that Gail McLaughlin is working on. And now, welcome our host, Justin Sampson. <laughs> All right. Hey everyone, I, um, welcome to the Radical Revolutionaries, this is uh, this wonderful, we apologize if you were tuning in at 5pm, we were having a little technical difficulties, but we're back, um, and we're glad that you're here with us, um, we still got producer Louie on the mic, how are you doing producer Louie? I'm doing dandy brother, and we thank got you Gail, thank you for, for being with us. Happy to be here. And we got uh, Julio working um, the computer as well. Yes. So uh, pleasure to meet you, Gail, and thank you so much for your patience. It means a lot. Oh, likewise. Glad to meet everybody, and yeah. Justin, glad to see you again. Yeah, glad to see you again too. We got Carlos um, and our intern Isaac there. Um, welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our Twitch. Um, you're really helping the show by doing that. And visit us, um, if you want to learn more about the show, visit us on RadicalRevolutionaries.com. There you can learn more about the show, how to be a member, and how you can help the show. So we'd like to, uh, you know, we got, we'd like to take it away with Gail. Gail is running for Richmond City Council, progressive champion, California progressive champion. Um, done great work um, um, in the community and within ca uh, California at large. Uh, thank you for being here, Gail. I really appreciate this. This is, uh, this is an awesome opportunity to get to know more about you, have people get to know more about you and get to know more about your platform and how they can advance progressive values in their own community. So thank you so much, Gail. Oh, thank you, Justin. It's really a pleasure to be here. And it's, it's been a little while since we've had an opportunity to see each other. So um, it's really great that you have this show going. And I'm so glad you asked me to be on. Thank you so much, Gail. So, um, so um, you said um, you were mentioning to me that uh, there was a, uh, an ILWU uh, strike that was going on this afternoon. Um, I believe you were in attendance. Can you kind of talk yeah. about what was going on? Yes, absolutely. The um, ILWU, which is the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, um, held a great action today. Um, it was a caravan and a march from the Port of Oakland. Oakland is right uh, by Richmond in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm -hmm. And um, we march, the whole, the whole theme of the march and caravan, um, or the demands rather, were to stop police terror and to end systemic racism and to stop privatization of the port of Oakland and of all ports. Um, and so we marched, uh, I actually was in a car caravanning and we uh, went to Oscar Grant Plaza in Oakland, which was named after, of course, Oscar Grant, who was a victim of uh, police uh, killing. And so it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, there was a rally uh, at the beginning and at the end of this caravan march, and there, Angela Davis spoke, and uh, Danny Glover spoke, and of course, various ILWU officials spoke, and Pamela Price spoke, who's uh, a really strong attorney here in the Bay Area who ran for office. Um, and so 
it was really great. And there were lots of people there. People are so fired up. Really, the time is now yeah, for justice, you know, yeah. and it was really yesterday, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. it's everything is coming to a point right now and, and people are focused on we can do this. So yeah, I'm yeah. really excited to be a part of this movement for justice. Well, that's great, you know, and you know, with what's going on right now, when you open the TV, when you open, go online, you know, you're seeing that people are really hungry for change and people are tired of the status quo and what's going on with policing. Um, they're tired of seeing structural racism, you know, happen before their eyes. Um, but um, just to give our audience um, a little taste of, um, you know, Gail's work, she was a two-time mayor of Richmond. Um, she ran for Lieutenant Governor in 2018. Uh, we actually worked together a little Justin, bit. Justin, I couldn't even finish counting how many awards she had. I, I, I didn't get to that part of her website. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very impressive to see how much work you have done. Uh, well, thank you. You know, it was with the community. And um, as Just, Justin was saying, we, we actually connected when he was running for office. It was state assembly, right? State Just senator. Oh, state senator, right. Mm -hmm. And so we, we were, tr I was running for lieutenant governor um, at the time, and we, we, you know, were trying to pull together all corporate free candidates in California. And of course, Justin was one of them, and we had a whole group, you know, I don't remember how many, 15 or so, and we all stood together saying, we got to get corporations out of our electoral system, and we have to, you know, promote the bold, progressive solutions to our problems in California. And of course, we were still standing for the local progressive alliances and wanting to raise them up, you know, like we have in Richmond. We have a, a Richmond Progressive Alliance. That's, so that's, we need everything. <laughs> that's great. You mentioned the Richmond Progressive Alliance and you're a founding member of that. Can you kind of talk about that? Because I think that's a wonderful idea if, you know, you have progressive alliances all across California mm -hmm. and possibly all across Calif uh, uh, the country as well, where, you know, you have local, uh, um, you know, just regular folks getting together and talking about uh, how we can get power. So can you kind of talk about the RPA and how was that formed and what were kind of the victories of the RPA? So right, yeah. So the Richmond Progressive Alliance was formed in 2003. I was one of the founders. We came together because we were really frustrated with, uh, as activists who uh, were speaking before our city council and, you know, sharing our, our frustration with the fact that there was so much injustice and inequity in our city. Um, and Chevron, we have a big Chevron oil refinery um, in Richmond, and Chevron was controlling the whole city. I mean, the, they had bought bought off the city council members um, or intimidated them. And so what we, um, we decided, you know, it was time to come together and we were going to set aside um, party affiliations. Like, you know, some were Democrats, progressive Democrats, of course. Some of us were Green Party members. I was a Green Party member at the time. Now I'm a no party preference um, person. <laughs> and um, we decided to set you know, set that aside, come together based on our values and run people for office, for council member, so that, um, and run without any corporate money so that we could get people in those decision-making seats. And then we can see things happening. And that's exactly what we did. So I was the first um, RPA, Richmond Progressive Alliance candidate, elected to the city council. Others were elected after me, all without any corporate money. So we regained control of our city. You know, Even though Chevron spent millions to try and uh, defeat us. And this took us, you know, about a decade to get to the point where we really had enough power, power on the council and power in the community. It takes both. That's what's the, the, winning, um, the winning strategy that a progressive alliance has. If you have, you know, you can't just have the people on the council, you have to have people in the community standing up and, you know, together we work. And then we were able to make uh, really important changes like raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour. And we were able to strengthen our um, community police review commission because um, you know, we, 
we had a good police chief for a long time. He left now, um, but um, he really shifted the culture of our police department. It wasn't perfect. We still had one um, fatal police shooting in 2014, which led us to further strengthening our commission, our police commission, our oversight commission, so that any time a police shooting happens um, that results in serious injury or in death, um, an immediate investigation, a civilian investigation on the police commission happens. Um, before that, you had to wait until the family or someone else would register a complaint, but now it happens immediately. So um, we haven't had any other fatal uh, shootings since 2014, um, but we know we need more work to be done in Richmond. Um, you know, we also passed rent control. The first rent control measure in 30 years in California was passed um, by our city. Um, and, uh, you know, we did many, many things. We, we really gave opportunities to parolees that were coming back into our community because we used to have a really high crime rate. We reduced homicides in our city by 75% during my eight years as mayor by addressing the root causes of crime, which is like giving people jobs and opportunities and referring them to different um, um, programs that they need. That's all the way to solve problems, not by putting more police on the street. So we became a leader in how to um, address crime in the proper way and also how to hold our police department accountable. But there's a lot more work to do. As you know, we now have this incredible movement for police accountability. And I mean, for the first time in my, you know, 18 years of, of local activism, I feel we're not alone in Richmond. People all over are standing together to, you know, against systemic racism and for police accountability. So that I, I think we're really pregnant with the future that we want. So I'm excited and glad to be back in the in the fray of local work here. That's awesome. And for those who, uh, you mentioned that you were a two-time mayor and as you, if you caught the, um, the intro, um, you know, Gail accomplished a lot of those things such as passing rent control, raising the minimum wage. So it sounds like Richmond's really been ahead of the curve even way ahead of what California, the state of California has been doing. So I really commend you and the work you and your RPA um, colleagues have been, um, have, put, have put in into the community. So you mentioned actually, um, and I think it's, um, it's, it's now official, you're running for city council again. Um, I did have a question though, since you were mayor, um, so you're still allowed to run for city council, is that, is that correct? Yes, yeah. So you... there's, a term, there's a term limit on running for mayor. You could only run for two terms as mayor. So after I ran um, my two terms as mayor, um, I couldn't run for mayor again, but I can run for city council again. So I decided, um, you know, just earlier this year, that you know we lost a, you know we had a, a few setbacks in Richmond you know we lost um, a couple seats on the city council in 2018 we didn't our candidates didn't win so it was like okay now we're kind of set back um, none of the policies were reversed but how are we going to make further change you know when we have the current mayor isn't standing for the progressive things we need in Richmond and you know the the majority of the city council now is not on board with the progressives as um, they were back a couple years back so I am said hey I will get back in this race and in this struggle on a local level because you know in so many ways all politics is our local you know so we know we have to keep deepening our relationships on a local level we need the good state um candidates and officials and good federal um, officials as well and candidates but if you don't have that empowerment happening on a local level and that takes both people on and off um, the dais unless you have that empowerment and that uh, working together you're not going to get very far because people need to be involved in the civic um, discussions that impact their lives. So um, 
I'm back uh, doing everything I can, and I hope to be on sitting on that dais again and um, doing everything I can on behalf of the community. Yes, so, um, and uh, we hope you get back on as well because we want to see more changes um, in continuing to see Richmond continue to evolve. I wanted to talk to you about, um, you know, what's been going on in 2020, and you kind of touched on it about how we all need to be involved, even just at the local level, because We've had some pretty, you know, bad defeats in 2020. Bernie not winning the Democratic nomination, um, everyone becoming demoralized by it. Um, you know, we're, we're starting, we're starting to, you know, yes, we're starting to see this hunger for change, but, you know, we're not seeing leaders really step up, you know, whether it be our president uh, in particular, who isn't showing the leadership that he needs uh, to show, especially during a time like this. So what, what would you say to people who are kind of demoralized about, oh, Bernie's not, Bernie didn't win it. I, I'm, you know, I, I think I'm going to check out now. Yeah, yeah. So that, that was very disappointing, of course, when Bernie decided to suspend his campaign. Um, it was very disappointing to so many of us. And it has kind of left us in a little bit of a lurch. What do we do now? But it's my view that we, we it, it was never about just Bernie, right? It was mm -hmm. not me. Uh, it was, yes. He always said, not me, us. So we need to really highlight and further deepen the us part. And um it's really something that that I think we've needed all along, and um, we need a movement. Bernie Oven by himself, even if he had gotten the nomination and didn't suspend his campaign, it still would have been up to us to build that, you know, and deepen that movement because. Um, one person alone, not even the president, can make things happen. You know, the, the whole idea, we're human beings, we're social creatures. The way that um, I think we evolved is um, to really care about each other. That's how we've gotten so far. However, um, it seems like the capitalist society that we live in um, and previous societies like feudalism and, you know, slavery and all these horrible exploitative societies, just like capitalism is, exploits us, is, um, is the kind of uh, going against our nature and it keeps us divided and separate. So P radicals, radical revolutionaries, like your show is called, has always have always been trying to pull people together to say our strength is in our bonding with one another. So in some ways, we're going back to how we originally evolved to be a community of human beings taking care of each other, caring about each other, um, and fighting against those who want us divided. So this fight against this harmful system of capitalism where the wealth inequality keeps growing further and further um, so that only a tiny, tiny fraction of the population, even less than 1%, um, is at the top while the rest of us struggle. And of course, those at the bottom, near the bottom, are struggling so very hard. We need to start putting the emphasis on the poor, putting the emphasis on all the working class people that are, are just barely getting by, if at all. And the pandemic, of course, has made it worse. So an economic system in crisis is now an economic system in crisis exponentially. And um, it's, it's scary that we're at this point, but it's also, it's also um, an opportunity to make change. I, I always see that crises is um, an opportunity for possibility. So um, I think we see those possibilities on our streets these days. We see people saying, we're out here because we're not going to take it anymore. Enough is enough. So I, I look at it that way. I look at the possibilities that are born of this crisis. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that's, that's you know, I, I like your outlook because we, right now, when and you look out, you are seeing that hunger for change. You're seeing people demand things such as police accountability. And you're starting to see people start making that recognition about when people shout out things like Black Lives Matter, 
people are starting to think about what else does that mean? Does it just mean police brutality or does that mean that people should also have equal access to education and housing and health care and a whole host of other, a host of other um, services that people need in the community? Um, now that you're running for city council, I would like to ask, um, what are some of the issues you are running on and what are some of the uh, solutions you see in terms of the problems that are mm -hmm. occurring right now in Richmond? Right, yeah. So, you know, of course, you mentioned some of them right there, Justin, housing, for example. Um, we really need housing issues and we need, we, we have housing issues and we need housing solutions and truly affordable housing solutions. One thing that i am um, been recently wrapping my arms around is this whole concept of social housing. I don't know how, how much that is um, happening in um, Southern California, but in San Francisco, um, one of the progressive supervisors is promoting this, n this new measure where um, there would be more taxes on multimillionaires and billionaires, and that those taxes would be used to create truly affordable housing. So um, that's something that we, I think we need enrichment. So I'm, I'm definitely working on issues of housing for the most in need in our community. Um, we do have rent control, but we need to, the mayor is actually trying to reverse that, the current mayor. So we're having to fight back against that. No, rent control is helping our community. You know, the, the little bit it is helping. It's not helping in a big way because um, there are so many problems. Chevron keeps polluting our community. We did limit their pollution, but we have to end their pollution, and we have to stop their tax evasion, uh, tax um, yeah evasion, and we evasion, and we also have to um, address the um, the immigrant situation in Richmond. We are a sanctuary city, and we protested against the detention center. We there's a detention center that's run by the county. Um, that Richmond is in, and we protested that our immigrant community should not be subject, subjected to those uh, detentions. And um, so we need to really do a whole lot more education. We're standing up for public education and, and uh, an end to the expansion of charter schools. Um, health. Health is a big issue, and given the um, pandemic, it's it's right on the minds of people and in, in people's um, various uh, needs on so many uh, issues, not only the pandemic, but so many health issues that people have. Richmond has among the highest rates of asthma because of the refinery, because we have a port and there's um, coal. Um, and pet coat being transported. We did have a success recently in, um, in we're talking about um, ending this coal and pet coat transportation in Richmond. So it's gonna be diminishing and eventually ended completely. So these things help uh, hurt the health of the people of Richmond and we don't even have a community hospital. So we're calling for, that's one of my platform issues, calling for a community hospital in Richmond. We had one, but it went under financially. We called on Chevron to pay for a new one. We figured that's the least they could do because they um, harm our community's health so much, but they refused. Um, so in the council majority at the time, this was back in 2014, we didn't have a majority of progressives on the council. The council majority did not stand with me and other progressives to have require Chevron to pay for a community hospital. We were reviewing one of their projects where they wanted to make some changes in the refinery. And we said we should withhold that permit until they give us enough money to get to keep this hospital afloat. Well, the progressives stood for that, but the council majority did not. So the count, the hospital is not there. So now we have to call for um, a community hospital. So our community members, so our people can get that health needs, get their health needs addressed. Uh, I totally agree. And I absolutely agree with the community health hospital because I, I think that, um, having one in in Richmond 
actually will help address all those needs that you were talking about. Now, I, I, I want you to kind of talk about, because I was really fascinated when I learned this about you in 2018. You know, mm -hmm. you were mentioning about how Chevron and their polluting ways, their enrichment, but you did get a big win against them by making them pay their mm -hmm. fair share uh, of taxes. Can you kind of talk about that yeah. fight and how you guys won? Yeah, we get um, $114 million in additional taxes from Chevron. Um, and that's spread out over the course of 15 years. I think there's a few more years left in that 15 year um, period. The way we got that was by forming a movement forming a mobilization of the community. Um, I was mayor and we had a couple other progressives on the council who were advocating for it as well. We put forward a ballot measure calling for a tax on, um, on it was a tax on large manufacturers, which basically was going to be a tax on Chevron. There was a few other large manufacturers that smaller than Chevron that would have had a little more additional taxes, but Chevron would have been the, the major player that would have had to pay significantly more taxes um, annually. And we won, the people of Rich, we educated the community, knocking on those doors and you know putting out messages through mailers and through social media and emails. And um, really people responded saying, hey, yeah, this big corporation, this oil giant in our city should pay its fair share of taxes. And we won, you know, the people of Richmond voted to, um, to approve this tax measure. However, Chevron took the city of Richmond to court and on a technicality, they overturned that ballot measure. So we said, all right, we're gonna fix that technicality and we're gonna put it on the ballot again. So they were all upset about, you know, Chevron was like, oh no, they knew that we were gonna win again. And this time it would be, um, you know, it would stand a court review. So um, they came to us and uh, talked about a settlement. Like, um, we'll give you um, so much money if you pull this ballot, this new ballot measure off, and they were going to put out, a, put on a countermeasure. And so we ultimately came up with this settlement that they would give us um, for $114 million. We thought that was the way to do it because it would definitely move us forward right then and there when we needed it. Um, so that's how we got it. And it came by way of community involvement what you know how would it have happened with just me and a couple others on the council advocating for it no because we were doing that for years but once we got the community involved and they were constantly coming up to city council meeting um and you know speaking at the public forum saying we got to get this ballot measure passed and and then afterward we've got to um come up with a really strong settlement that helps the community and so that's how it happened. Um, we need more, we don't think it's enough. And eventually this 15 year period will end. So at that point, we're gonna have to come up with a new um, tax measure to make sure they continue to pay their fair share. And, I, and, I, and I, if, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of that money was used to clean up the city because of their polluting ways. And I think it also went towards housing, if I'm not, of uh, some housing as well, if I'm not mistaken. Well, you know, it went into the general fund and various, act, you know, actions and programs. Um, we have all kinds of uh, good programs in Richmond, not enough, but we have, um, you know, various programs through our community centers. And of course, our libraries are, you know, always doing wonderful programs. And we have a wonderful, um, neighborhood of uh, office of neighborhood safety which is that unique program that where we have outreach teams that go out into the neighborhoods that are hardest hit by crime and they connect with um these these outreach teams are made up of 
formerly incarcerated individuals who have gotten out of prison, have you know just turned their lives around, we hire them. And then they talk to the youth in our neighborhoods and tell them, you know, hey, if you need some help, substance abuse programs, or if you need education programs, job training programs, um, we will steer you in that direction and we will help you. We will give you that um, support you need. And so that was very successful. So money from that extra money was used for these kind of um, violence prevention programs. They were used for um, recreation programs, youth services, and our housing issues are are such that we we still you know we have a homeless issue like every other city. It's gotten worse in recent time in the last couple of years. Um, and we really truly need to have some kind of social housing that people can truly afford. Um, but uh, at this point, you know, we, I would say the housing crisis is something that is, is something that needs critical attention. I was actually fascinated when you were talking about your Office of Neighborhood Safety because uh, there are calls right now in the streets about defunding the police. And I'm, based on what you're saying right now, like that could be a solution on how we can eventually defund police by uh, the, uh, diverting all those funds to things like the Office of Neighborhood Safety, like um, <laughs> community centers and, and so on. So I, I did want to, with the final moments I have left with you, I wanted to kind of ask, uh, uh, you, you did start the California Progressive Alliance and I was so excited when you did that. How can people form progressive alliances in their own communities? So for instance, here in Anaheim, we have, we're fighting Disneyland right now. We're fighting the mm -hmm. uh, Anah Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. So we're fighting multinational, we're fighting uh, multinational corporations and billionaires. So how can people here locally, and it might not just be Anaheim, but if you're living in Los Angeles, or if you're listening to this show and you live elsewhere, how can people like them start progressive alliances themselves so they can start holding elected officials and people in power accountable? Right, yes, that absolutely needs to happen. And, and during the um, period of time that I ran for Lieutenant Governor, I would talk about how people can form their own um, local alliance. And about you know a dozen, 15 new alliances came up. There's a San Diego Progressive Alliance, and um, there's a Pacifica Progressive Alliance. There's um, Sacramento has their own form of a Progressive Alliance and various other cities. Um, there's a South Bay Progressive Alliance here in the Bay Area. What we tell them to do is start out small, come together with people who's with other activists, who share your values. Don't worry about party affiliation. Just have the same values. Come together, start meeting frequently. And I actually met with one of your council members in Anaheim, Jose Moreno. Mm -hmm. so, yes, um, he's yeah, a buddy of mine. Yeah, he's a, a great person and been fighting Disney, as you mentioned. So you have your own type of uh, big uh, corporation. We have Chevron, you got uh, Disney, you know, same thing. It's these big, powerful, moneyed interests that want to control the cities they operate in. So um, the thing to do is just come together, meet regularly, and then run candidates for office without corporate money and say, you know, People get afraid or, you know, to, to make that step to run for office, but the thing of it is you don't have to be an expert in government policy to run. You just need to have the right values and you, and you need to have a willingness to learn and to work side by side with the community. So I would say come together, um, get a website, start um, identifying candidates who are, you know, candidates who have the right values and, uh, you know, like you were, Justin, willing to take that step forward and run for office. And then you have to have people surrounding the candidate. So the candidate isn't alone and the candidate knows that they have to be accountable to the people who, um, who are um, supporting them. And then they have to stay accountable once they get elected. Absolutely. So um, uh, with the final minute we have left, do you want to uh, give your, I guess, your elevator pitch, why people should support you, where can they find more, learn more about you, and do you have any social media uh, accounts where people can follow you? 
Sure, yes. Um, first of all, I do want to mention California Progressive Alliance is the statewide alliance that we created after I ran for lieutenant governor. And that's we're doing great work on a state level, endorsing many great progressive uh, corporate free candidates. But on a local level, um, and the California Progressive Alliance um, website is californiaprogressivealliance.org. Now on a local level, I am running, as I mentioned throughout this interview, for Richmond City Council District 5. And my website is gale, G-A-Y-L-E, for F-O-R, richmond.org, gale for richmond.org. And um, they could find me on Twitter or on Instagram, um, Facebook, Gail for Richmond, or just Google my name, Gail McLaughlin, M-C-L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. And um, yeah, you'll see that I'm working very hard and showcasing the um, possibilities that we have in Richmond. And of course, I'll want to keep connecting with cities throughout California so that we can share policy ideas. This is how we cross pollinate. And you know, eventually California is going to be showcasing what a state can really, really do when it turns itself into a true progressive um, state that is overcoming the challenges of capitalism. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so thank you so much, Gail, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Do you guys have anything to say, Louis? Um, I, I just want to say, Gail, wow, after hearing you speak, I am definitely a fan, and I know that our audience are likely going to feel the same way. Uh, I look forward to learning more about the California Progressive Alliance, and uh, thank you so much. We'll share all of your, your uh, links on the on the screen and we'll share it on our social media as well we appreciate you so much oh thank you i really appreciate this interview and all you're doing we need really progressive media and that's what you all are so thank you for doing that it, it really helps counteract the establishment media that we're stuck with as well absolutely yes. and this is what it's about it's about connecting movements kind of mm -hmm. like what the progressive alliance is doing um, uh -huh. And it's all about, you know, it's all about bringing people together. So uh, with that, we're going to sign off. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Gail. Thank, thank you, you, Producer Louis. Thank you, uh, Julio. Um, um, remember to visit us, RadicalRevolutionaries.com. With that, uh, my name is Justin Sampson, signing off. Thanks, guys. Peace. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Radical Revolutionaries. Today, we have a very special guest, Gail McLaughlin. Gail is the former two-term mayor of Richmond, California. Gail has a background as an educator and professional experience in nonprofit leadership organizations promoting literacy, social justice, and environmental health. Gail is running for South Richmond District 5 City Council, a healthy, safe, just, and sustainable Richmond. Some of her Richmond-wide priority areas are stop foreclosures on homeowners, prevent renter evictions, and support small businesses, ending Chevron's pollution and tax evasion, build a community hospital for Richmond, build affordable housing while preserving the neighborhood's character, these are just some of the great policies that Gail McLaughlin is working on. And now, welcome our host, Justin Sampson. <laughs>